that these are power brake linears. Meaning is I can hit a button and it'll pull my mirrors in and or put my mirrors out, okay? What's the idea behind breakaway mirrors? Well, God forbid you should ever get too tight of an area, you can pull them in. Or, and I've done this on my own car, I kind of went by a truck just a little bit close trying to get around to make it turn, and it hit the mirror and the mirror just popped in, nothing broke. If it does break, you've only got to replace this, you don't have to replace the whole thing. And of course, we now also put the blinkers on this, on, on this to, uh, to make sure that more people have visibility of the fact that we're going to turn. Now, whoops. Plus car washes too. Yep, car washes too. Now this, I won't say that the car is dent proof, but I'm going to say with the kind of coated metal we use in these in things in there anymore, it's real tough to dent the side of the car. All right? Plus, Nissan's gone one step further. In every door, you're going to find a steel beam. Now the best way to imagine that steel beam is to imagine a guardrail on the side of the highway. It's got those bends and twists and curves. They do that because that ends to the strength of the metal. You're going to find a beam, cross beam, like that in every one of these doors because Nissan is all about protecting the people inside. Now it sounds like Nissan's really done a great thing here, doesn't it? Okay. Since 1996, all vehicles sold in the United, all cars sold in the United States must have a front crumple zone, must have one steel beam in each door. It's a federal law. Because most people never get a walk around, most people never realize it. I didn't say Nissan was the only one to do it. I said, let me tell you what Nissan's done. What that means is that you can give that same spiel on any vehicle we have on our pre-owned lot. With the exception of pickup trucks and SUVs. I want to double check those, because they're not required by law. I think they now are, but I think it's 2008 and up. So you want to double check that law. But on cars, 1996, and we don't sell anything over 96 anyway. So you can use that same spiel. And it, it impresses people because people never get walkarounds. They never hear this stuff. Okay, now, as long as I'm here, let's also talk about some additional safety. Now this vehicle is equipped with a three airbag system. The first airbag system is the front airbags, all right? Now, we're all familiar, but these are third generation. First generation airbags were like burlap bags. They fired up, broke people's noses, scrap, scratched faces. Second generation is they went to the nylon bag, but they packed it in powder. If you ever had an airbag go off on you, which I did one time, you think you went blind because the whole car fills up with powder and everything, and nose, and I'm serious, it's terrible. These are third generation, or third generation airbags are a nylon type airbag, but it is now a staged system. Instead of the airbag just boom, firing off, it fires out in three <coughs> stages, boom, boom, boom. The third stage, which of course is milliseconds between, the, first, the third stage acts like a catcher's mitt. The idea is rather than push you back, it's to get you like this and put you back more gently. This vehicle, because this vehicle has active head restraints, which means in case of a front end collision, all right, when you go forward, headrest follows you. So when the airbag catches you and puts you back, it's putting back the headrest, cuts down on whiplash. The travel is so much less, so it does cut down on whiplash. And over there on the passenger seat, there's a sensor underneath that seat. That airbag is only going to fire out, fire out relative to the weight of the person in the seat. Under 72 pounds, the airbag will not fire. So if you have a small child in the front, and most parents were concerned, the airbag would go off, the child would suffocate. Hence the reason why in the older vehicles you can turn off the front airbag. In this vehicle, under 72 pounds, it will not fire. And if it does fire, it's only going to fire out relative to the weight of the person. So for you, Felicia, what, maybe about 95 pounds, okay? And then for what, big tough guy like you, pretty strong, well built, what about a, probably a good solid 185 then, aren't you? Okay? I always, but I don't care if a woman weighs 250. What, for you it'll go off at maybe what, about 140? <laughs> Giggle, giggle. They giggle, trust me. For the guy, I always go up a couple of my kids saw you, what, 210, 220. You know, I'm always, oh, don't I wish. But I always kind of do that on the road, right? Now, the next airbag system, side curtain airbag system, that comes from the top down. It comes down to right about here. The idea, the idea on the side curtain airbag system is to protect your head and your shoulders from flying glass and your head flying into the glass. Then you have a uh, the, the side airbag system, which comes up to right about here, that's protects the hips and your knees from a side impact. But Nissan's got a step farther. We also have a supplemental airbag here in the front. Why? Because 
This steering column right here is on a breakaway. So if God forbid you should be in a front end, a, a, a front end collision, the bottom part of that steering wheel is going to break away. They give you a little airbag so it can't come out and hit your knee. But what it can't do is it can't put the steering wheel back into your chest. That's the idea behind it. Okay, now what I'd like to do is, is I'd like to have you go ahead and have a seat in the car. I'll tell you what, since you're closer, why don't you just go ahead and have a seat here in the car, if you will, please.